Okay, back with the podcast again, and honestly, like, I don't really know, again, what to do, I'm just not really sure, but I think the best thing to go for recently, shit, I did not mean to tap that. Sorry, scrolling on a different device while recording, because, yeah, I still have my old phone as a backup in case something happens to... The one that I'm recording with and using right now. But. Anyway. The best thing to talk about probably would be Smash. It's been a pretty crazy weekend. We had three majors. Sumabato SP50. Delta 8.5. And. uh, Region 2024. Region. uh, Was won by Gluttony. Leo in second place. And Crepe Soleil in third. Honestly, I'm pretty shocked that Gluttony won just because he had to go through Crepe Soleil, which he Gluttony has had huge issues with recently. I think this is the first time since maybe Game is Game that Gluttony has taken a set off of Crepe Soleil because Gluttony just has a pretty big Steve issue. And then beating Leo wasn't unexpected at all. For Gluttony, Gluttony has just had Leo's number in the last several encounters. The last time Leo took a set off of Gluto was set one of Grand Finals at Pound 2022. That's how dominant Gluto has been. Over a full year since Leo has been able to take a set. Which, props to fucking Gluttony. But, yeah, then Leo beating his first Steve player in bracket, at least that I remember, since he beat... Uh, what the fuck's it called? I think that's the first time Leo beat a Steve player in bracket that was, like, a big name one since Akala at Ludwig Smash Invitational, still back in 2022. Like, it's just, it was pretty fucking crazy how dominant Gluto's record on Leo has been recently, and the fact that Leo was able to be deceived was just as crazy, one he hasn't been able to since so long ago. Which, like, there definitely are some issues that Leo has in his play. I've noticed specifically as of late, Leo has been dropping a lot of the drag down up air confirms. And this year that he hasn't the past few years. This is the first year Leo hasn't won Genesis. Last year was the first year that Leo hasn't won Smash Factor. And honestly, I'm one of the people who was saying, yeah, Leo shouldn't have been ranked first on Orion rank in 2022. I don't think it was the full year ranking because uh, the Panda rankings before Panda Global shut down were the... Uh, because the Panda Global rankings covered the first half of the year before they shut down and weren't able to do the second half of the year, meaning that Orion Rank covered that second half before being bought by Luminosity Gaming and becoming Lumi Rank. And especially halfway through, Leo didn't have his Genesis win anymore. All he had was the LSI win, which I've heard a lot of people say is the highest caliber of Smash that was ever played. Leo's run was absolutely dominant, so I'm not going to argue that. But it is not the most impressive run that Smash has had. I am sorry. Like, there are several players, people will argue, this is the most talent that we've had, and all the same place. When it's just not. I'm sorry, I fucking love seeing Leo play, even when he was winning everything, but you cannot call this the highest caliber of Smash play ever, when so many of the players there weren't at their peak. Like, even Leo was not at his peak. Kurama was really the only player who was. Akala had yet to see the crazy dominance that he would in after LSI in late 2022 to early 2023, 
what his fucking tweaks dominance started at the very end of 2023. Spargo hadn't even returned or end of 2022. Sorry. Tweaks dominance did not really start until the end of 2022 and it was rather short lived, but Spargo didn't even return to competing main time until the end of 2022. So he still had a lack of playing experience for quite a few months on end because he only played four events after Genesis in 2022. Uh, what am I thinking of? Gluttony had yet to make his big step because, yes, he won pound and he popped off at Genesis, but he was still doing relatively tame, quote unquote, other than that, because... Yeah, he was making some top eights, but there was also very little attendance at the time from him, unless it was some sort of huge event. Mia, <laughs> Mia wasn't even at the event, and that's crazy because he, or I can understand it for the time because he did just win his first major at Kagari B8 that year, so I can understand that. But you had players like Justice, who hadn't gotten a major top eight yet at that point. Omega, which n no no shade to either of these players. To any of the players who hadn't made top eight, no shade at all. Especially Omega. I fucking love Omega. I love watching just the state of Georgia at Smash in general. In my opinion, they are easily the best state at the game. And it's just crazy to see. But so many of these players, I get that it was an LCQ, but it just wasn't the highest level of talent that everyone always says it is. So many of the players were either past their peak, like Meister, whose peak was like late 2019 to early 2020 before uh, the pandemic happened and Smash got shut down. Mars, who had been past his peak... Hadn't made a top 8 since, I think, Low Tide City. Or wait, was Lost Tech City before or after in the same year? Huh. Even then, Mars had way past his huge, like, constantly putting up top 8 results by quite a bit. Who are some of the other players? Cola was nearing the end of his top eighting every major streak he was like one of the only players you could debate for being at their peak at that time onen which yes it is onen i recently found out that it was not onen but yeah onen had already passed his streak of winning let's see it was combo breaker into gommel into smash con and then nothing after that which, don't get me wrong, Onen is still a fucking amazing player. Absolutely brilliant in every way. But you can't argue that he was not past his prime at that point. Just so many players weren't even close to what their peak were, or it was, or would be, either before or after the event. And I just don't think that it would be proper... To say that that was the best Smash, or the most condensed, highest level of Smash that we've ever seen in the tournament. I just don't think that it at all would be accurate to say that, because it definitely isn't. But, back to the discussion of the video itself. The other tournament... Oh wait, actually... Before we go on to the next tournaments, uh, we had a Ridley make top eight out of major, like a solo Ridley player for the first time in Ultimate's lifespan. Mezcal at seventh place was absolutely insane. Also, do we have, like, I could have sworn I saw Bloom on the attendance thing, but I checked top 64, didn't see anything. Did he just DQ? If I had to assume that is probably what happened, but I can't say for sure. Like, I'll even check 
I'll check again. Top 16, did it have Bloom? Oh shit, yeah, Lugie, Lugie got upset, Siski got upset. Rosa has had three different people make top eight with her this season, damn. Wait, Pharaoh was traveling? Okay, and he placed 13th, damn. Honestly, big respect, but yeah, I don't see Bloom anywhere. Which, honestly, it kind of fucking sucks. Because I love seeing Bloom play, and it's been so long since I've actually been able to see him. With the increased results from people like Tama P. Daifuku in Lima, as more so Tama P. by far, because of just, oh, I don't know, the fact that he was one of the most consistent players last season other than Umabura, and won his first major, like, that was absolutely insane, but... Yeah, uh, Mezcal or fucking Ridley making top eight, and then Solo, a player who came out of absolutely nowhere, the third Rosa main to make a top eight major in, I think, Ultimate's lifespan. Also crazy. Tarek finally getting another top eight placement. Good shit to him. Space, who I didn't mention... An, he actually used a fair amount of inkling in this tournament from what it looks like. Which, good shit to him. We've been seeing less and less. And I wish that we would see more. Now, on to Delta 8.5. Uh, let's just say it was quite crazy. I was watching this after I got home from work on, I think it was Saturday... And it upsets after upsets after upsets. I am honestly a bit sad that Taike didn't make top eight. He was so close to making it winner side, but just barely missed out. But hey, I can't complain. It was still amazing seeing him play. But the big run from this tournament that I want to talk about is Maul. I have never heard of Mal's name before this. No disrespect to them. I heard that they were like 35th seed. So that's pretty good considering it's a Japanese tournament. But making it as far as they did was crazy. Of course you have Shuton winning it. First seed makes sense. But fun fact. This was Shuton's first major win in 2024. And now he can put himself up in the uh, same category as... Leo, Tweak, and maybe a few other players that I'm not remembering for uh, for one of the very few players that has won a major every year of Ultimate's life, other than 2018, of course, because that was the fucking year it came out. Or, okay, I shouldn't say the year it came out. It came out December 7th. There wasn't much time for tournaments and then. But yeah, Ken, very respectable second place. Hopefully he gets more than 28th in the rankings and doesn't get robbed this season like he did last season. But Reno was one of the huge unexpected results of this tournament. Getting third and almost reverse 3 0 in Ken. Dropping game one with a Byleth, game two with a Sephiroth. Then winning games three and four with a Byleth before losing game five with a Byleth. But he did use a fair amount of Sephiroth, most notably to beat Mao on his crazy run. Uh, Yaman Action got 3-0'd by Ken when he went Steve. Honestly, it was pretty expected. Uh, then lost to Motsunabe 3-1. But I want to take a look at some of Mao's wins, just to put it into perspective. Mao beat Akakikusu. He beat Gorioka. He beat Meister. Let's see, who else did he beat before? In winners, he lost to Reno. But even just those three wins alone, Akakikusu, Meister, and Gorioka, those are incredibly impressive. He beat, he beat Aegis or EZS, the, uh, what's. The Terry player, I don't really know Lee Mac, but he's a little Mac player, but 
That's still four incredibly impressive wins that Mao was able to achieve. Easy or... I don't know whether to say Easy S or Aegis. I'll just do Easy S from now on, but... Yeah, Easy S, uh, Meister, Gorioka, and Akikikusu are incredible wins to have. He also, unfortunately, put a stop to... I'm just going to say Akari because I don't remember the last name in the Japanese title, but or in the Japanese game tag. But Akari was going on a crazy run and ended up getting 13th. Unfortunately, their run was stopped 3-2 by Mao. But yeah, and Shuton went absolutely insane. The only game he lost before after he got to top 16 was to I think it was Bendanga is that the ta- the tag Kebanaga the only game he lost was to Kebanaga the Kazia he swamped Uame 3-0 destroyed Ken twice 3-0 beat Tarame Train and Yuba 3-0 and those were his only sets. He dropped a single game throughout the entire tournament. That's, like... I'm not going to say it's the most impressive tournament Ultimates had. Of course, that would be stupid. Just like how I said that LSI wasn't the best... or the most talent in a single tournament that Ultimates had. But the level of dominance from Shuton here was on similar levels to Leo's level of dominance at... Uh, LSI. It was crazy to see the runs that were happening. And now to switch over to the last one that there was. Sumobato SP50. Now this is probably the one that most people have seen if I had to guess. It was taken by Daru, who I will still say as Adarakun. Because it, I just like saying Adarakun. But yeah, Adarakun won. I can't say it's close at all because it definitely wasn't. Or I can't say it wasn't close because it definitely was. And Winner Simis barely took a Game 5 set over Dormigi. Won 3 1 for his first set win ever over Hurt. Lost 3 1 in the first set of Grand Finals to Dormigi. And then won. And game five set set two in, of Grands versus Dotomigi. But the big thing is that that game five was just he got two zero to deaths on Dotomigi, and I felt so fucking bad. There's just no chance of Dotomigi coming back from that. Speaking of Dotomigi, though, his second place was also crazy. Just like Rodakun, he got his first ever win on Hurt, close 3-2 set, after getting a, a 3-2 win over Meister and a 3-2 win over Karage. Then uh, Navy the Luigi placing 5th. And I've never heard the name Navy before, but I'm obviously assuming he's a really good player. Karage beating level 1 to get 5th after losing to Dotomigi, of course. Uh... Level 1 making it to top 8 at yet another major. He's had an absolutely insane start to this season and entirety of last season. We have Meister making 4th place, which first time we've seen a an invader get top 8 out of Japanese tournament since Umabura 10 at the start of the year. But the big story from this tournament was absolutely the Piranha Plants. I think the name was Toss or something, but I'm I honestly don't remember, so I'm not going to say for a fact whether or not the name was this or that. But just seeing a plant and top eight, a solo plant by the way was quite insane. They beat Lax, they beat Ashimo. I don't know who Nako is. They beat Aiba. And that's all I really know. But still, wins over Lax and Ashimo were 
those are amazing wins to have. Especially when the Ashimo win was 3-0. With fucking piranha plants. This is undoubtedly the best result from Plant that we have seen since his win on, or since his second place at that one, I think it was in Umabura, that Abadongo won over Brood, where Brood got second. Which, honestly, just thinking about that, Plant got second at a major once. Ultimate is fucking crazy. I, wait, was that snow getting 13th? Damn. But where did Meister first lose? I think that... Okay, Meister lost another set to Doramigi. Won some losers, of course, but once in winners. 3-1 in winners, 3-2 in losers. Okay. So he does have a bit of a min-min problem. I think he lost four sets to min-min overall this year. Three of them were this weekend because he lost to Doramigi at, uh, I think it was Kagadibi. Then, he, or in a game five set, he also lost to Doramigi uh, at Sumabato SP50, of course, twice, once in losers 3 1, once in loser, or once in winners 3 1, once in losers 3 2. Then he lost to Mal 3 2 at uh, Delta 8.5. He just has had an issue with the Min Mins. But still, really good shit to Meister. Coming out and placing 4th at uh, Sumabato SP50. And then I think it was 17th at Delta 8.5. Just going absolutely insane. Finally putting up an, a top 8 for an invader at a Japanese event. Japan's just too fucking good at Smash. Um, I'm not upset at them for anything. Good... They're grinding their asses off. They deserve all the fucking credit. But yeah, Smash has been really exciting recently, and I'm just... I'm glad I could see all the competition, even if a lot of the community are just complete sacks of shit. <laughs>